welcome back. It's Christina Good with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to be talking about how to draw a gray squirrel. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. All right, here is the gray squirrel. Um, they have a lot of variation of color and a lot of overlap in their colors. So as we, you know, build up the um. The drawing I may be making some adjustments and certainly blending some colors over and into each other um, we'll see how it goes a lot of the gray up on their foreheads does have a lot of brown mixed in as well especially down in this area um, so yeah there'll definitely be a lot of, of uh, sort of adjusting as we go but we're gonna get started by the nose hair by the nose is really short there's also some gray pushing down a little further than what I'd drawn so Remember, I'm making adjustments to my sketch while I'm sketching this out. Always careful around eyes. Um, I know I say this every time, but um, we can pick up differences in, uh, you know, the line around an eye because it's what we're drawn to. And typically, um, so, I mean, you can have some hair going into the eye, but um, if it's clearly not meant to be there, we'll notice, you know, we'll pick up that difference. And so I'm always a little bit more careful around the eye to make sure my line is nice and clean. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's it's relatively easy to do the fur because it doesn't have to be a perfect edge, especially with the squirrel because I'm doing a lot of blending. Um, and I'm going to pop off the gray layer and sort of talk about what I did with the brown. I probably should have done it while I was drawing it, but I haven't done that before, so it is a little bit of an experiment. Um, I have drawn gray squirrels before, um, but I've never tried to mix in in the sketch layer uh, sort of a very loose layer of uh, the other color that's mixed in. And in some of these places, the colors will be kind of blending together, and in others, it's going to be a little bit more of a clear transition. Now his little um, chin here. Uh, I'm gonna draw to the edge so you know just like with this edge here right I draw to the edge of it and then um, cut it off now uh, here we have almost a color change with it and here we don't but still drawing to this edge is, is gonna make it um, sort of indicate to us there's a dip happening which is what we want because his his little uh, his little chin has, you know, kind of almost a part of his face, jaw, or whatever underneath it. So this part is his bottom chin because I think this is his lip. I don't I'm very good at figuring out how to describe anatomy with animals. <laughs> Alright, so um so the first time I really tried this, is squirrels, um, either I haven't drawn it and I've just left this all gray, um, or I've sort of drawn clusters of it, but there's such a mix. I think this might work if I just add in some highlights by this. And all I did really was spread out a bunch of lines. And then as I built in the gray, you know, I just sort of put them in between the lines. So that'll give me an idea as I start adding shadows and highlights where to fill in what. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes when I start doing that. I'm gonna have the light source coming in from over here. As always, you know, that means above and in front of, not um, behind or next to. 
gives the best chance for your subject to um, to be really nice and highlighted. You want them to be um, very clear and seeable. So by not having it next to or behind, you know, you're really being able to sort of illuminate your subject. And this is just full pin pressure. Now all edges are in shadow. Right, so this edge kind of dips down, so we're going to put this in shadow. There's an edge here, and then of course the edge on the side of the face, because it's rounding away from the light source. So, Now as it comes over this way, of course it's also in shadow, because you have, um, right, the cheek is, is rounding in, so it's rounding away from that light source. So this front edge would also be in shadow. Some of the cheek will be in highlight, but it's uh, I find it easier to put it all in shadow and then sort out where the highlight is from there. The nose won't be big enough to block it, but some of this will definitely be in highlight, which we'll figure out once I get the, the shadows in place. All right, so now to give a little burst here. We don't have to put full pin pressure. We just don't have to hold back. We're just adding extra lines and then again, not doing it as lightly as I just did it and that'll be enough to fill it in. So nose won't be big enough here to block it. Now this is where it's a bit of an experiment, right? Like I'm drawing in all of this brown before I add the um, gray to see if that um, makes it a little easier to draw in this sort of speckled color the next time. Or if it, you know, just looks clearer or, you know, makes more sense in the end, we'll find out. Sometimes um, when I do it, I feel like I'm backtracking. You know, you're trying to add some speckles or some extra fur or, you know, haven't really drawn it in. Makes it harder to sort out where it goes. All right, now for this gray. Let's see how this works. I keep flashing on that brown. I'm not completely happy um, with the way that turned out, that little experiment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a completely lost cause yet, but I'm going to have to definitely do something to fix it. So I've been flashing it on and off because sometimes early in the process it's hard to tell, um, but I think at this point it's obvious. And I'm not sure the exact reason if it's too um, regulated. I have them almost formulaically spread apart from each other um, or if doing it at all was a good idea and you know maybe I just need it more organic so there's there's things I can do and I'm gonna try to see what I can do the final alternative of course is to just color the whole thing over with the gray and so 
um, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's not that doing it lost me anything. Um, certainly I found a lot of great things by experimenting. And I think uh, experimentation, you know, absolutely leads to some amazing discoveries of things that you can do or ways that you can push the envelope more or tips or tricks that I have learned over the years that usually come from experimenting. Um, this one did not work out, at least not initially. Um, like I said, there may be a way to fix this, so we'll see. What I do like about, uh, about it is when I pull all the way back away, right, when I zoom all the way back out, you get kind of that speckle effect, which is great. It just doesn't quite come out the way I hoped, especially when you zoom in. So, I'm going to finish out the gray, and then I'm going to come up here and sort out what to do. I think first I'm going to try to spread out the brown, um, and potentially cover some of these with gray, or at least mix them up, um, and see how that looks. Because uh, it can also be that removing this, fill the rest in with gray, this little bit of brown is enough to give it that speckle as well. Just not sure yet. But first, we'll finish out the gray. All right, that looks better. Still gonna add a little bit more brown into the gray. Somehow I didn't select the right thing at all. All right, we're looking pretty good. I have to finish up the ears, the nose, and then the eyes. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of light down the cheek um, where the gray is. I think that transition um, doesn't quite work. Um, you know, you don't really want a color, uh, like a light change with the color because it often looks like it's a different color than it is. So you want, instead of like a, a highlight changing, and so I wanna make sure that this is clear that this is a, a light source changing, not that this side is just darker. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the ears, but first I'm gonna temper off this just a bit. Um, sometimes when you leave a gap too much, it, it almost looks like a cartoon, right? So to temper that off, I'm just gonna very lightly put a few lines through them temper off exactly how, how much of a shadow that's casting so that it doesn't look like a cartoon with a harsh dark line even though I want that to be a shadow so I do want that to be there and I'm going to be pulling some of this white over um, I think that's also too far so now the ears right back side of this ear will be in shadow um, because the light source is, a front and it is um, above and in front of, whereas on this side, this side will be in uh, highlight, although that back will, that back edge will still go into shadow. But this will be in highlight because, you know, with the light source coming from above and in front of, it's, it's potentially hitting right on that ear. I have some longer wispy hair as well, so I'll be, um, I might add that in as well um, after we get all this in. After I do the ear, I'll fix the little white sections and then go on to the um, nose and the pink of the ears. I'm gonna do this in shadow first. 
um, so I can sort out exactly where that highlight would be. So there will be some highlighting along this side, but not on the back side. Sometimes in a small space, you know, you're not working with a lot, you can still indicate it even if it doesn't seem like you can, you can do a lot. It's just you have less space to do it. Alright, so there's going to be some highlighting through here. And then just fading it off. Pulling it up into here. Okay. And now this side. Now, um, depending on how far, right, light source coming in, but you have the head. So the head's potentially blocking some of this. Especially the further down, like if this hair was pulling further down, you would have an active shadow kicking in. Uh, you really would here enough, except maybe where right where it's kind of connecting or down here just a little bit, but it's not a lot. It doesn't go down far enough. And then of course the back side and the and this tip being shadow. So it rounds away, but this shadow on this back side shouldn't be as deep as the shadow on, you know, this side. And then there will also be shadowing along the edge that's rounded into the ear itself or, or, you know, facing into the ear itself. But otherwise we have highlight. White hair, you know, a little bit behind the ear. So on this side, again, in shadow. All right, <clears throat> now for the pink. I'm going to start with his lip and I'm just going to lightly fill it all in first on his lip. But I probably am going to give it some highlight. Not a lot. Sort of tucked in under his uh, inner cheeks here. Just adding that little burst of highlight now. There we go. And then the nose. Now the ears, I'm going to try, you know, and taper it off like I do sometimes. You know, you have a recess coming in the head, probably around here. So, you know, filling it in and then sort of um, letting off. I'm going to start with uh, shadowing it first and then sorting out the highlights from there. As I'm doing it, I'm also straightening out this edge. Right, it's an ear, it's fine um, to leave it that way, but sometimes I'll try to just give it a gentle nudge to straighten it just a little bit. It's important if you're doing that, right? I want the lines at the top here to be clearly disappearing into the fur. I don't want to have a gap of that black um, like I will down here, otherwise I won't be able to pull off that effect. Same is true with underneath. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm going to start taping it off. I, I've been, uh, sometimes I keep drawing and nothing's coming out. It's because my little nib tip, um, you know, I mentioned it probably a couple months ago now, but it's been slowly uh, dying on me. I'm not recording all of my strokes. Only noticeable when I'm putting light pin pressure, but because I am actively, honestly, doing that a lot, it affects it can see what I'm doing is I'm lessening out, I'm not only holding off my pin pressure, I'm lessening out how many strokes there are overall. That's how I'm going to get that full illusion, especially into a dark recess like the ear. And you can kind of see how that worked, but we are going to give it a little bit of a highlight. So the light source coming from above and in front of, there's probably some light kicking in right along in here, so I'm going to brighten that up. Top is probably casting some shadow, which is why it's not all the way up into here. It's probably just a little bit kicking in. And then the ear rounding, you know, that bottom is probably catching just a little. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, 
I'm pulling this one back a little sooner. On this side, right, ear turned away potentially. And so um, it's on the side of the shadow, so I wouldn't want um, this shadow on this side to be less than what's on this side. I want it to be more. So tapering that back a little sooner, putting a little less as we come on in. Yeah, still has it, but definitely a side of shadow. And then if I decide to, to make it a little brighter, it's easy enough add a few extra lines to, to tighten this up and bring it in a little bit. All right, now there's a little bit of highlight. Again, you have that ear bowling. There's probably just a little bit of highlight here. Where that ear is catching. So not all the way to the edge. And certainly not where this would block it. I'm gonna do a few small things with the brown including fixing his little his lip here. I feel like one side has a clear, nicer line than the other. And then his eye, you know, eyes are so important. I mentioned that earlier. So making sure this is a nice kind of clean line and there's no weird bulge like I just did. <laughs> See, now that looks nice and straight, which is what we want or at least close enough. Um, and then I'm gonna get some wispy brown kind of, you know, up here and behind the ears, in theory. Well, not much, just to indicate that there's something there. Same on this side. First we'll do the eyes and then we will move on to the um, whiskers. So on an animal like this I often just take this um, lasso tool and I'm going to do um, kind of an inverted teardrop shape, right? So light source up here I'm gonna kind of follow and the reason I'm doing that is I'm following the contour of the eye a bit. So we're gonna come up have almost this contoured teardrop shape, right? And it's not a very pretty example but following that contour. I'm going to do the same thing on this side against the light source. Right. And then we're going to fill it with the foreground color. And make sure that I did that on the right layer. Okay, but we're not done yet. So now we're going to take this one and we're gonna have fur blocking it. And we're gonna do that by making jagged lines, right? So I'm gonna have these jagged lines come up like it's blocking and then erase that. So you get kind of that effect. Lessens the one on that side, which is fine. It's on, it's on you know, the shadowed side. And now we're gonna add whiskers. So usually their whiskers are black. I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to do some in white, but depending on if I should do it in gray instead. Uh, let's do a few in white. You know, you move at the shoulder for this, moving my whole arm at the shoulder. Their whiskers kind of go all over the place. And I don't want it to go off the edge of the canvas, although you could if you were wanted to do a closed, you know, canvas. Bring it all the way up. You want several bunched together typically. You don't want just one hanging out by itself. And whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. So if I have a lot coming down or to the side, I need to mimic that as much as possible. Bow it up like we did over here. Again, you don't want one by itself. And now I am going to do a darker color here. 
I'm not going to show up as well, but I knew that. And then a couple going up. Maybe even a couple through the eye. Yeah. All right, so that is how you draw a gray squirrel. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.